Welcome back, this is Yamajack. Today we got Gunslinger Evacuation Point Suicidal. How y'all doing today? Ooh, I just got really dizzy for a moment there. Like, I started swinging this round, and I was just like, what am I looking at? It's all just blurred. It's all blurred, dude. It's gone. It's gone! Scan lines. You know what? Let's go look at the bus. Interactive... Is that how you spell tour in... What is this, Swedish? I think it's Swedish, right? Now that's Sweden? Time. Something fun's coming. I think so. I don't know for sure, but I, I, uh, like, I, I'm trying to like find something that I'm not trying to like read the language and be like, yeah, this looks like Swedish to me. I'm trying to find something that indicates the the country to me because I can't recognize it from the language. It's just uh, my memory is saying that this is uh, like a, a Swedish boat or something like that. Um, so, I don't know. I was, uh, I was reading some Korean stuff, and there's a common problem in Korean translations where uh, P's and F's will get switched back and forth depending on which translation group you're reading from. Uh, which is a, is a problem that kind of interests me. So I, I asked one of my one of my friends, my linguist friend, about it, and that's because uh, Korean doesn't actually have an F, and their like P is I can't remember exactly how it goes, um, but their their P's kind of sound or could sound like F's to some speakers of some languages. So you know, depending on kind of where you're from and, and your interpretation of it and your maybe dialect of English um, you might you might hear a Korean P as, a, as an F uh, just because the way they uh, they Let's get you restocked. like differentiate between their plosives which is like ba and pa and stuff is, uh, is different from the way that we do it in English and they don't have an F sound um, so it's kind of similar to like the R and L of uh, of, uh, of Japanese Right, like Japanese doesn't have an L sound; it has uh, an R. Um, Go make a difference. And the R isn't really like a, an English R, right? Like R, this sound R isn't really in Japanese, right? They have like, uh, you know, burrito, right? Like that, that bito, right? Like that, that kind of like. R, which is like kind of like an R, but then also kind of has like an L in it, and there's like a, a little bit of like almost like a D kind of sound in it, you know. Um, so when you when you end up translating that, you know, when somebody's name is uh, Dito in uh, in a Japanese anime or manga, typically it would get translated to Rito, but uh, you know some people might translate it to Lito. Um, and to a Japanese person, both of those names that I just said probably sound pretty much the same. Rito and Lito probably sound almost identical. Because uh, they don't differentiate so much between the R's and the L's. Uh, just like the language doesn't have those sounds, you know? Like, it's it's not there. Same way that uh, I, as an English speaker, have trouble with pronouncing their R. Uh, so in uh, in Korea, the, it's kind of the same thing, but with uh, with P's and F's instead. Although it's like different. It's not it's not the same thing. It's it's different. Um, but uh, same kind of problem where the language just doesn't have this sound, and then another sound is kind of similar-ish. And uh, so depending on who's kind of reading it and translating it and the way that they're doing it, uh, they might end up translating it to uh, to one letter or the other because uh, they would sound similar enough. So one uh, one common thing is uh, in Maple Story. Maple Story is, uh, is originally a Korean game. In uh, the translated, like the officially translated version of of, uh, of Maple Story, like GMS that I play, uh, the level 140 like normal equipment side is called a pencilier, like like that. In Fan translations of Korean Maple Story, like uh, some of the wikis and stuff, use this. Uh, it'll be spelled like uh, Fencilier. Fencilier. And these sounds are kind of similar, right? Like Pencilier and Fencilier. 
you probably might not even be able to tell the difference without like going back and listening to it again um, over the uh, over the internet because I made the uh, the F there fairly uh, close to a P but um, but uh, yeah it happens <sighs> it happens all the time in uh, in manga as well like when you go from one translator to another translator and all of a sudden they're switching their P's and their F's around and stuff it's typically they'll have uh, a uh, they'll, they'll they'll be partial to one way or the other, and it's only in names and stuff. It's not like they're changing the four to a P, you know. Like they're not like poor for. I'm going to the grocery store. Poor groceries, you know. Like it, it's still four, right? Like that's that's the English word. But for names and uh, places and and uh, and stuff like that, especially things that are made up in the world uh, of, uh, of the manga. Uh, going from one translator to another will oftentimes end up switching the P's and the F's, which is interesting to me. I always love that kind of stuff when I'm reading a, a foreign media of any kind. Um, just kind of noticing the quirks with it and being like, huh, I guess the, the language has like a similar P and F because they keep getting switched up in the end of translation. Um, kind of slowly piecing it together. The language, slowly but surely. I'm uh, I'm learning bits and bobs about uh, about Korean. Not enough. I'm not I'm not reading the language at all. I'm just uh, I'm not I'm not watching like Korean, uh, you know, audio visual media. Just just strictly uh, visual stuff, web comics and and whatnot. So I'm not hearing the language spoken very much. Um, but I am seeing it spoken, and some of these words oftentimes slip through. Uh, especially in names, um, they uh, they continue to slip through, and then uh, a lot of the time in like one language they have a word for something, and that word doesn't exist uh, in English or in another language, right? So, uh, for instance, one thing that happens in uh, manga, like the Japanese stuff, quite often. is uh, in royalty or noble families or stuff like that in, uh, in manga um, you know the younger sibling will refer to their older sibling as Onisama or Onesama and the translation will just sometimes just change that to big brother or big sister but that's not really the right translation because that would be you know, Onisan or Onisama, or, or <laughs> I, I did the wrong. Anyway, uh, Onisan or Onesan, uh, which would be big brother or big sister. Whereas with the Sama, there's a uh, more of a, a respectful um, kind of undertone to it. It's not even really an undertone. It's it's more of like an overtone. The uh, the Sama honorific is uh, is is like a tier above San. It's like a, a few tiers above San. Um, and uh, you know when when you when you just translate that to Big Brother, you kind of lose a little bit of that nuance because that that'll often be like a, a point in the story that uh, you know, like oftentimes, you know, it'll be it'll be like a thing. You know, they'll be like, they'll, they'll somebody will call them like Onesan or whatever, and she'll be like, no, it's Onesama. And uh, that'll be like a point, a thing in the story that's happening, you know, because the uh, the older brother or the older sister, or whatever, is like sort of like a a uh, like a domineering kind of person and, and demanding this this higher level of respect in their uh, in the way they're addressed. Whereas if you just translate that to big brother or big sister, then that's kind of lost because you can be like you know brother, and they'll be like. No, big brother. It's not really the same kind of thing because again, that's not really like the thing, you know? Like it's it's just not like Onesan would be big bro big would be big sister too. So it's like, you know, how do you really translate that? So you, you don't uh, and then you would just leave it in as the as the original Japanese um, but uh, like Romaji or whatever. So it'd be like written with uh, with Latin characters, right? So you end you'd end up with like 
you know, the, the character being addressed as like, I was going to type out in the manga, <laughs> but no, like you'd, you'd end up with the character being typed out like as One-sama in the, in the manga, right? Um, so this happens in, uh, this happens in Korean manga as well, to a lesser extent, um, but uh, they do have some words that aren't really there in um, English, like, uh, one is uh, they have different terms for, like, people of different ages, um, so oftentimes, you know, somebody will call somebody like a mister or an old mister or whatever, and they'll be like, no, just, like, call me brother, you know? Like, I'm your hung, I'm, I'm your hung or whatever, however it's pronounced. I don't know, like, again, I don't hear it spoken, I just see it. I'm your hung or whatever, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, don't, don't call me your, don't call me mister, call me brother or whatever. And, uh, you know. That, that kind of nuance is lost in, in translation when you translate it to English because all of a sudden there aren't these like gradations of, uh, of ways to address people of different ages. It's, it's just the one kind of like mister, old mister, <laughs> or like brother. Like those, those are the three that we have in English basically, but uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more nuanced in, uh, in a lot of languages, uh, Korean in particular, uh, the one that I'm reading right now that has this kind of problem in uh, 3CM hero or hunter rather uh, so then this kind of stuff ends up getting you know not translated and left in and then you end up with uh, kind of like picking up bits and bobs of the language that way the written language anyway because again I'm not watching it I'm not hearing any of it spoken um, bits and bobs of how the, uh, the language works and stuff and it's, uh, it's interesting I like it not the language. I'm indifferent towards the language. Um, sorry if you're Korean, and I don't really have any. I'm not really partial to any language other than English. My uh, my native language, and, uh, and perhaps Japanese. Really? Really? Why would she have? Why would she have done that? Like why why did you why did you do that? I don't understand why she ran around. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing is reading some of that. It's fun. And I and I learned that uh, Korean doesn't have an F sound. There's no F. Well, there's no like f sound. You know, they might have an F. But it, it would be, like, Japanese has an F as well, but it's it's not the same as an English F. Like, uh, you know, if, if you're to be saying, like, foo in, uh, in English, it's foo, right? Like, that, that harsh F. Uh, whereas in Japanese, if you're going to be saying foo, it'd be like foo, which is kind of like, a, almost like an H-y kind of F. It's more breathy. Um, so Korean might have that, but that's not the F sound. So that's kind of cool. Learning bits, picking it up. I'm not really going to worry about learning Korean. I've heard it's an easier language to learn. I don't know, personally, never done it, so can't say, but I've heard it's an easy language. I don't know if I'm going to. I might someday. Goat. God of all teas. This looks like Swedish to me. Only because it looks like what it is, and I think it's Swedish. So it could be it could be French, and I'd be like, I don't know, it looks like kind of Swedish to me, because I've got I've got it so set in my mind that this is Sweden. Now, if it was French, I'd recognize that. French is one of the few uh, languages that I can recognize. You just gotta look at it and be like, I don't know, it looks a little bit uh, annoying, and that it feels like they're thinking they're better than me. Then you're like, Ah, I see, it's French. It's all this, all this fancy stuff. French, I don't know, like French. Uh, if you, if you look at like words in French, because they're they're like based on the same thing, right? Like it's all coming from like that's why they're called the Romance language, because it's all from you know Rome. You know all the languages from the uh, the old Roman 
language, except now they're Romans languages. You know, that's it's not because of love. It's because of Romans. Um, so they're all kind of like based on the same thing, you know, like uh, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, French. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm drawing a blank. I should know, like, there's like, what, 30 of them or something? I can't remember. There's a lot of them. Uh, but if you look at them, French is like a, a, an outlier, I think, right? Because it oftentimes, like, does weird stuff to words just because of reasons. It's like the, uh, the British version of French. Or of, uh, of, of, uh, Latin. Get it? Because everybody hates Brits. Anyway. Um, I have British friends. I'm allowed to make British jokes. Also, I have British family. So I'm allowed to make British jokes. It's, uh, but French, I think, is, is, is an outlier for, like, being weird. Right? Isn't it? Because you end up with, like... You know, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, and, you know, all the other Romance languages will be like, yeah, it's pretty close to, like, this kind of thing for this word, and then you're, you're trying to, like, figure out what the Latin thing is, and you look at French, and it's like, we made it fancy. So, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, it's kind of strange. They uh, they do weird things to their words. I don't know why, what the reason behind it is. I'm sure there is. It's, it's probably related to the dialect of the region, but... um. But my understanding is that they, uh, that the French is, uh, is a, is a particularly different language compared to a lot of the other Romance languages. Which is why, probably, uh, English brings over so many loan words from French. You know, menu, venue, um, like, I don't know, I, I can't think of any else. Like, it's like a huge majority of our language is just, uh, French loan words, though. English. Um, that is. And it's probably because of, uh, and it might not necessarily, you know, I, I guess whatever reason it is that French has made such a, a departure from Latin, whatever that reason is, is probably the same reason that uh, we've we've taken on so many of their words, is my guess. And I'm not a linguist, I don't know everything for sure, but that's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. Don't take my word for gospel, but... It's interesting learning about languages. It's not interesting enough for me to, like, <laughs> go to school for it. But uh, I really love talking to, to my friend who's a linguist about it because it's, it's all so, so interesting. You know, and that way I get to learn a little bit and have, like, interesting conversations and learn interesting things. But I don't have to, like, invest a huge majority of, well, not majority, but a huge part of my life towards uh, learning this thing that I'm like, I'm not really going to do anything with it. I don't really, I don't care that much. It's interesting. I like it. But it's not, it's not a, it's not a, invest like a huge part of my life into it, you know? So I really appreciate that he, uh, that he likes talking about it. Cause that way I get to, I get to get my linguistic fixed every now and then, which is fun. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you like, subscribe to more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.